Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode number 13 of my Transport Fever CDs here on the Orkney Islands. This will likely be my last ever Transport Fever episode as because of today, Transport Fever 2 is out, which is extremely exciting. I'll talk more about that shortly. But I do first of all want to apologize and say that I've not uploaded in two weeks. Why is that? Well, I went back to Scotland for about five days, which was fantastic. But I also have just been extremely busy with work and also been doing actually a lot of other uh, commitments, really, which has been good. Doing a lot of coding recently in my spare time, which is good. And that's what is going to happen, really. I don't want to push myself to an extreme schedule. As we go into Transport Fever 2, we are probably going to up things quite a bit because I know I'm going to be playing that game a lot, but. You know, when it comes round to the off-season, or what I would say, like maybe February, March, you know, before the summer kicks off, I'll probably do a bit more of this, you know, have longer gaps in between videos, just because I am interested in other things and want to pursue other hobbies, which is very much what I've done over the last two weeks. Now, I wanted to achieve a lot more in this series, and again, I will cover a lot more of this in the live gameplay, but I just want to say what's going on in the background right now, so... As I've hinted at throughout many episodes, I wanted to start connecting up the mainland and I was leaving that to the end. How this series worked is I really built outwards in and the reason for that was because if I built inwards out then it would have meant the mainland, the main body of Orkney which includes about 8 different towns, that was going to excel at a much rapider rate because they're much better connected, they're connected by land. So that's why I started out in the islands and it really gave us a real difficulty with a lot of routes and also moving people around in goods and it was a financial burden to be honest. It was really, really difficult but it was really enjoyable actually struggling having to do micromanagement because very much usually in CDs and Transport Fever I land up having a ridiculous amount of money and then money's not an object and there's no challenge there which I really dislike. Whereas we very much achieved that in this series, which has been fantastic. And I think the viewer, yourself, through the comments and feedback I've got on this series so far, and just the general feel, I think people have really, really enjoyed it, and I have as well, which is fantastic. But we didn't really eventually get to the mainland, and I was really predicting about maybe 16 episodes for this series. But what I've decided to do is decided to pretty much complete the mainland just in this episode and wrap up the series just with the time constraints of Transport Fever 2. So in the background the time lapses, they are me basically just building railway lines connecting up the mainland which will go over shortly in with the live gameplay but to summarise basically we've got Kirkwall. Kirkwall is the capital. It's not actually the biggest town on the map by far but in real life Kirkwall is the biggest town in the Orkney Islands and it does serve as the administrative capital. And that's what I've gone for here. So I've gone for a really large station in Kirkwall, eight platforms. That then connects down to St Mary's and along to Gritley, along to Tanker Ness, down to Orfer, and then it continues along to Finstown where it divides up and goes up to Dunbay, Evie and Bursey, and then on the other line it goes over to Stromness. So it connects up all the towns on the mainland via rail, which is quite an ambitious thing to do actually, but in this episode, I'll cover it as well. I add in some more docks. A new dock goes in at Stromness. A new dock goes in at Finstown. A new dock goes in at Kirkwall. And I think that is really what is going to be going on. We might do some other stuff. I'm not really at all sure what I'm going to do. But that's my plan in the back of my head anyway. And with all this, I decided that we're just going to skip the bus connections. We're going to jump straight to railway. Now, the problem was, for me to do all this building and actually get trains onto the network, I was going to need quite a bit of money. Fortunately, we are actually making a good turnover per year. We're making currently about 10 to 12 million per year, possibly even more, just because we've been doing really well in the last episodes. And in episode number 12, the live stream, we did focus on a lot of the smaller side of things and really trying to get the extra dollar out of many unprofitable routes. And because of that success, while I was doing the building of all the lines, which did cost a bit of money, but it didn't actually cost me too much just because I tried to very much follow the terrain. And also the mainland is generally quite flat compared to some of the outer islands, especially on the island with Lioness, Long Hope and Rackwick. But being able to go and build all of these lines in advance meant that 
I could just do this in the time lapse and then we can get straight into the gameplay and that was really the aim. And by the time that happens, I also let the game run a bit just generally anyway. I did have a large pot of money, over 40 million, which was fantastic. And it meant that from the get go in this episode, I could really just start spending and that's very much what I did do. So I'm going to get a few comments I realise saying that there's going to be uh, people missing this series and I very much am as well. I'm sort of disappointed that it has come to the end in the way it has. I wanted to do more episodes, I wanted to expand the story but what I want to do is try and celebrate in this episode what we have achieved. It's a very long one so I do hope you enjoy it. I wanted to tie up lots of loose ends, I didn't want to end on a cliffhanger or anything like that. So I do apologise if this is too long for you, but it is there for you to watch at some stage. And you don't have to watch it all at once, but please do go ahead and give me your thoughts on it. Give me your thoughts on this series in particular, because going forward I want to do more series like this. I want to do some creative series, I want to do some really, really difficult series, some challenge maps, that sort of idea. And for that to happen, what I think I need to do is really just get feedback from yourself on what has gone good and what has not gone good. And there's a lot of things I'm going to continue on with, but I'll leave that to the imagination and the future. Again, I'm going to promote myself at the start of the video here. Can you please leave a like rating to support the video and the channel? Go ahead and check out my Twitter and my Discord down in the description below. Now, if you join my Discord, I'm on there every single day, multiple times a day, usually depending on work though. And that's really where I'm getting a lot of my ideas from, where I'm interacting with subscribers and where I've got a lot of my feedback for this series, which has gone very well. And thank you to everybody who's contributed feedback throughout it. That's where I've got a lot of my feedback from and where I've, we've had a lot of discussion and it's really helped to drive this series and I want to do that in the future. I think that's really all for the intro. So we're going to jump into some live gameplay for one last time but thank you very much if you have consistently viewed this series it's greatly appreciated i can't wait to see what we do in transport fever 2. enjoy the live gameplay well hello there ladies and gentlemen welcome to the live gameplay of the last episode here of transport fever on the orkney islands and saying that honestly brings a tear to my eye I'm really excited about Transport Fever 2, but this game has just provided us with so much good content, so much fun. I do say this in the bottom of my heart, I really am going to miss this game. I really am. It is such a great game and I really identify with it closely. Games like City Skylines, Rollercoaster Tycoon 2, they're great games but I, I, and I identify with them in some way, but not all the way, whereas this game it just takes every box from me. And I can't wait to explore and just start our journey on Transport Fever 2. So I hope you can join us with that. Make sure you are subscribed. Again, as I mentioned in the intro as well, I had a lot more plans for the CDs. And unfortunately, a lot of them just haven't worked out just with time constraints. So I definitely want to be better with that in the future. As we go forward now into Transport Fever 2 and over the winter period, there's going to be lots of different stuff. But this series here on the Orkney Islands, it's provided us with a different way to play the game. Hard mode has been really difficult, the financial constraints have been phenomenal in this series and it has led to me really playing this game in a different way and I want to really do that in Transport Fever 2. I want to maybe start off with looking at building cities where I'm exploring a lot of the new features of the game. Then we might do a detailed series where we really focus all on detail. Then we might do a money based series, there's so many endless possibilities on that game which I'm really looking forward to. Anyway, enough about Transport Fever 2 and what we're going to go on to. Let's finish this on a high, ladies and gentlemen. We've done a lot of building in the time lapse, and that was mainly on the mainland, but there's a few other things I do want to talk about. I'm going to make this episode slightly longer, as you can probably tell by the timestamp, because there's a lot I want to do, a lot I want to finish. And for that to happen, we need to get started. Just very quickly before we do get started, though, I want to just summarise what I've done. Mainly in the time lapse I've gone and built large infrastructure and that is mainly railway lines here on the mainland. We've connected up every single town on the mainland via rail in some form or another and then we've also built different lines along to the towns. I've signalled them up. We have a lot of money, 42 million right now, making sure the game is on times 3. We've jumped forward about 20 years. So we have a few new unlocks as well, but I really wanted to have enough money to actually put trains on the tracks, which I think successfully we do. 
which I'm really happy about. Aside from the trains, what else have we done? Upgraded some capacity, especially with the fuel here. The fuel is just going at a fantastic rate, to be honest. I think we can probably add in a second boat, to be honest, on one of these routes. I'm just trying to think. That boat's just leaving now, and we could have another one. It's interesting. The amount of fuel we're producing, I mean, the limit is 6,400. It is just phenomenal. It's done fantastic. We've done a bit of growth there. We've worked on some passenger ships, some buses. I basically just upgraded buses which were needing the end of their lifetime. We have also gone and built a few new ports and airports. Got a new port here at Weir. This is going to connect down into Kirkwall, which we're going to talk about in a second. That'll connect into Kirkwall North. I've also built an airport here, Kirkwall Halt. This is going to be the main airport for the, or this part of the mainland at least. What I want to do is probably have a few regional airports, don't want to do too much. We're going to have an airport here in Kirkwall. Probably one here in Bernine and Surin. Maybe one up Rapness, Brazewick, Kettletoft, Whitehall, Grobster. We've got a few possibilities. Probably not going to build one on South Ronald, so we might build a small one down at Cleet, but generally this island is quite well connected to the mainland as it is. And then I would like to have one probably over here for Long Hope and also for Lioness. Interesting to see we're still running cider two shares on a route. Those buses have been out of date for quite some time now. So that's really the plan. There's so much more I would like to do, honestly. I would like to connect up a lot of cargo, especially in this part of the world. We've really not even touched it. I think we also have a lot more opportunities around our existing cargo. I would like to maybe get a tram in between Bernayan, uh, just around Bernayan, to be honest, and then maybe even up into Surin. You know, we've got so many possibilities. It's just a shame we have to end on this note. Things are very busy over here in Eddy, aren't they? Which is nice to see. How is the bus? And I'm just going to jump around all over this episode, ladies and gentlemen, so I do apologise. We got signed our two shares in Eddie, which is probably not the best bus to have, so let's go for some nice large bendy buses. Let's upgrade now for 2.62 million, which is ridiculous, I know, but we need to get people moving. There's like 100 people at this bus stop. Maybe not quite 100, but it is actually basically 100, yeah. I mean, over 90, which is a great figure. But let's get started. Where are we going to get started? Well, I want to talk about Kirkwall and the lines we built because the trains, the rail routes on the mainland, they all centre around this station here. This is Kirkwall. Now, I built this train station before, but we didn't build up any connections. Let's look at the route map here and see what we've got. Quite a lot going on here. I'm also missing one train route I have just realised, which is connecting over here to the town of Tankerness. So let's very quickly just do this. TP Kirkwall Tankerness, which is fantastic. So that is ready to go. So I've connected up, as I said, to all towns here, but we've done it in an interesting fashion. So first of all, the two, I guess, dark green. Let's have a look at this for you. This is a bit better. We've got the dark green. Dark green relates to the commuter line for Kirkwall. What this is, is this is a suburban train around Kirkwall. Connecting up to the port, which is going to connect up to Weir, Brunei, and that sort of part of the world. Then it's got a, I guess, train station at one side of the town, the main one at the bottom, then a train station at the other side of the town, and then we've got our dock, which this dock will serve Balfour, and then we've also got the airport as well, which, as we have mentioned, will connect up to various different islands. So I feel like Kirkwall, even though it's not got any connections right now, it's already on a decent population, but as soon as it gets any connection, it's going to grow rapidly. I'm expecting near enough by the end of this hour, which I'm mainly going to run on times three speeds for the area within the railway tracks to be full. I do expect it, and I would expect it to be outgrow with that if we had cargo, but unfortunately we're not going to get to do that, at least right now. Who knows, we might come back and do a part 14 one day. That might be really nice to do, actually. A uh, throwback, but we'll cross that bridge another time. So then what we've got is we've got our orange route. Orange route, our new routes that connects up to Tanker Ness. Quite simple. Continuing on looking in this direction, then we've got two railway routes. We've got the yellow route, which the yellow route is going to connect up Kirkwall into St. Mary's and then on to Gritley. Now, Gritley is a very small town, so I've done this for a reason. 
We've got the train going via there. Then we've also got another train line. We've got this, I guess, aqua blue down at the bottom here on platform seven and eight. This connects up the town of Orfer, which is quite small, 90, and that goes into St. Mary's as well. Now, St. Mary's has three different platforms, and the reason is St. Mary's is going to be a high demand place. That's why it's got two different train routes going into it, and I think that is for the best. There is some weird thing happening here. If we throw that onto Terminal 1, I mean, that's definitely not what I want. If we throw 4 and then 4 into 2, there we go, that's it resolved. Wonderful. So, that is the reason why St. Mary's is getting to. St. Mary's is a massive town. I'm not really at all sure how big it is, but it's had connections for a long time. 810, and it's only going to get busier now when we start to add in the trains. Then, continuing on in this direction, we've got two different routes. They both start here. We've got the green and we've got the dark blue. Let's follow them up the line. They share the line all the way up into Finstown, and at Finstown they split. So we've got the green line continuing over to Stromness, and then that goes down to the docks. And this docks connects over to a connection with Rackwick, which we'll shortly build. And that means that people coming over from Rackwick, or possibly even further south through the bus between Lioness and Rackwick, can literally get on the boat, get off the boat, and then get the train on into the main land. Then we've also got another train line coming off here. This is the pink line. It connects up Stromness up to Dune Bay, and then this goes on to Evie. Then additionally, we've got the dark blue line, which we left at Finstown. It continues up to Dune Bay, and then on to Bercy. I do apologize if I've got some of those pronunciations wrong. A lot of these times we've not looked at yet, so I've not been able to be corrected by anyone in the comments, but I think I'm relatively close. I did contemplate adding in an extra train from Finstown to Eevee just because Eevee's really big, also at a population of over 800, so I'm considering that, hence why we have built this track here, but we'll just have to wait and see where the demand really builds up from. Let's get started. Let's actually put some trains on the track. We're just going to jump into this straight away because we've got a lot of money. Might as well start to get some demand and because we can get really, really, and I mean really cheap trains, we can get trains on the go as soon as possible. So let's get some trains going. Let's first of all get some onto the commuter line, though I don't think actually trains will be able to get onto this line until I make this change. If we run you into there like so then that means the train in with this depot should be able to get over there, which is perfect. And then what we'll do is we'll probably just start off with one of these multi-units on every single route, to be honest. And then we'll scale up from there. So we've got four trains to come in. Two of them are deployed right now. And I'm expecting the demand to be all over the place to start with, to be honest. As long as we don't go bankrupt, which I don't think we will, because we're not spending too much money on a lot of these trains then we shall be fine. So that's four trains on the go in the mainland here. Interestingly, we cannot put a train onto the Tanker Ness route, which is quite unfortunate. Even though Tanker Ness, what platform are you in? You're in platform three. Which you should be quite easily, I should be able to quite easily get a train onto there. Why is this being strange? Oh, I can. There we go. Right, wonderful. So we can select you there. And then I think that's all from here. Have we got a... No, maybe the yellow route, actually. I think we need to put a train on the yellow route as well. Lots of trains. I mean, there's six routes that come into this train station. So all in all, pretty massive. The only train station then that we... Or train route we've not put a train on is the pink line, which comes out of here at, or it doesn't come out of here, sorry, it comes out of Eevee and Dune Bay and Stromness. So what I will do is I will add in another depot over here at Stromness for the time being. Let me add in a extra junction here. Very quickly grab another train depot. Now you've noticed that I've not actually gone and put in much train depots and there's a reason for that. I really wanted all my train situation to be centralised around a central point which very much is Kirkwall in this case. I like this idea because it means that everything's a bit more focused. I've got lots of 
really interesting train stations, lots of crossovers, no loose ends, that's really what I wanted. If I had more time, I'd decorate all this with lots of bushes, lots of trees, maybe some additional sidings with some rail carts, and that's really what I want to try and explore in the next Transport Fever. There's a real lot of room for growth and experimentation in my series and gameplay going forward. Okay, so we'll leave the trains for now and we'll start to see the towns develop. I mean, the trains are very much empty right now, but I think they'll fill up slowly. I could add a lot of support in for the trains and that's something which we'll maybe try to look at at the end of the episode. For example, Finstown, we can go and add in some connections with the dock, for example. I want to do that, but let's focus on getting some different infrastructure in here first. So we've got a few loose ends we need to tie up and let's start off with doing that. So we're going to connect up the Rackwick situation. So we're going to have a bus stop by the docks here. Then we're going to have the bus which is going to come into the town. Now I don't need to stop at many bus stops in the town but we're going to make sure we stop at bus stops which we don't currently really serve. I want to have a mixture here uh, but I also don't want the bus getting stuck in too much traffic to be honest. That's one thing I definitely want to avoid. So we're going to have it go through some quieter streets around the outside, you could say. This is going to be interesting because I feel the bus in Ratwick's already very, very crowded. But I think now that we're going to add an extra connection onto the mainland, you don't have to go down to Line S and get the boat anymore. It means that we might have a bit more of a distributed load. So we're just going to stop four times in the town. We're not really covering too much of the town, but it's enough to make me happy. And then down here to Green Lane. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. We don't actually, we only call it five stops. So all in all, it's really not that bad. My naming structure, I've already forgotten. I've honestly not played this game in about two weeks. It has been quite a while. Just because of how busy my personal life has been. But anyway, so this is Rackwick. And this is a bus. I suppose we need to name it something slightly different here. Um, let's call it the Harbour X. Express. There we go. That's nice. I like that. We can press the right key. There we go. So that's the Harbour Express for Rackwick. With that said, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. We need a vehicle depot. That's what we need. And then we need to get a few buses on this. Now, what kind of buses are we going to start off with? Probably going to go for... You can get Volvos at 62 miles per hour. Let's get a few of these. Let's maybe get two or three of these. And then we need to get the boat into play because that's going to be the next big thing which we're going to need to do. So that's three buses on patrol there. Then if we very quickly go in and grab ourselves a dock. And then place that down. Costing a lot of money. I mean we're going to spend a lot of money very, very quickly this episode I have realised. But that's why we've got a lot of money. And I am glad that I've saved up because I knew this was going to happen, to be honest. And I've let the game run for a long time because of this. Anyway, this is BO and this is from... It says it's actually from Stromness South. It's not. It is from Rackwick, as we know. And that's then going up to Stromness, which is perfect. Then what we can do, I'm probably going to get like two hovercraft, I think, doing this route. So all in all, not too much action down here. No, no big fancy boats, but these should do the job and cross the water really, really quickly. Connecting people up to trains, which it looks like we're already starting to get people waiting for trains, which is fantastic. How are we doing elsewhere? I think Eevee Station, surely this might be a bit busy because Eevee as a town is quite busy. I've got the station in a relatively central part as well. It's doing not too bad. We can definitely extend the bus at some stage as well because we've grown right along here and again it'd be great to connect into the farm but I just don't think we have too much time. Finn's time we've got some people waiting. Kirkwall this is what I like to see. So we've got 17 people waiting already at the station. I don't know how we got 17. I mean we are quite close I guess to quite a lot of buildings which are residential which is quite useful as is the other train station though which is cool as well so Looks like we're already getting quite a lot of build-up. How is the train itself doing? It's got 20 people, that's fantastic. What we're going to do already is we're going to put the second multi-unit onto this. And it's actually at the worst point in its loop, isn't it? I want to sort of make sure that it's doing opposites. So we're going to let that continue to go for a bit. 
The next thing I think we should do is go and build a harbour over here by Balfour and the connection which we're going to run up to... There we go, navigatable waters. Basically from Kirkwall up to Balfour. Balfour, I don't think I'm really going to connect up in any other way. I mean, we could have a boat going up to Weir maybe. That's maybe not a bad shout to be honest, but there's really not going to be a lot of demand for it because the town is just so small. Let me very quickly go and make this connection though, and again what we're going to do is we're probably going to have like two hovercraft all in all. And this is actually going to help the train out as well, because right now there's no reason to come up to this station here. We've got the airport which is flying nowhere, and then we've also got a harbour which isn't being used, so it's about time we go ahead and do this. So this is Balfour up to Kirk Wall, which is perfect. Interesting yellow. And let's go ahead and get two hovercraft for another one million. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to deploy that train before the train gets right back around the circle. Where is the train? There it is. Okay, it's just left the station, which is a perfect time to release this train. Get it onto the right line. There we go. Already got a lot of people waiting here, which is good. A lot of people want to go to Gritley, which is interesting can imagine a lot of that demand is actually for St Mary's. I doubt it's Gritley itself, but hey-ho. We've actually got people wanting to go both directions, which is good. So I'm happy about that. It's interesting that we've actually just gone ahead and skipped the bus connection stage for most of these towns. Kind of glad I have, to be honest, because it means that we don't have to worry about competing routes and demolishing routes, that sort of thing. What have we got here? We've got a train in the station, which we just kind of don't want. I want to put this new train out onto the route now, but unfortunately not. How full is that train? It's got away from me. Not quite, but 32 people is phenomenal. That's great. Let's get this train onto that route ASAP. I realise it is going to be quite close, but this station's getting busy already. I'm not surprised, to be honest. I'm really not. I mean, 14 people waiting already. It's fantastic. And hopefully that'll be a great money maker. Okay, so with that, that's a boat... Going into Balfour, I don't think we're going to do much more with that. We might add in a, we might add in something later, but I want to connect up some other stuff first. Most importantly, this dock here in Kirkwall up to South Weir is what I want to do. So this is going to probably be, I can imagine, one of our most busiest routes. So we built another dock, I know, another dock in it. We are so we are island has now got three docks in total, which is quite a lot, but I think this is needed to be honest. So if we go for TP or it's not TP, it's definitely not a passenger train Callum. Well done. Uh, let's go for Kirkwall up to We are, which is really called Wire, and I don't know how many times I've got that wrong in this series, but hey ho. Now I would want to continue to connect into Brunein, but I don't actually have a lot of free dock space in Brunein, so that's why I'm quite happy connecting into Weir here. Only thing I want to do is we're going to touch on modifying the bus route maybe, because I think we can do an extra bus stop uh, and maybe remove a bus stop as well, just because there's going to be a lot of people I can imagine wanting to get on to this boat, so it'd be good to have a bus stop nearby so people can connect nice and easily. So let's go and grab the route. The route overall, it's barely profitable. It is profitable though, which is good. So let's get rid of New Street there. Then from Victoria Street, let's go into Green Lane and let's go back into Victoria Street, which everything has gone horribly wrong. So let me try and redo that entirely. So we've got, oh, this has just screwed everything over, hasn't it? Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I think I know why actually, what we, oh. Right, first things first, let's sort out the mess that's been made here, which is not the way to do it. Now, I usually edit a lot of this out, I really do, but I'm kind of enjoying actually just breaking this stuff down again. So let me have a think, 9, 10, 11, then after 11, we just need to come over to this bus stop here. Well, the answer is quite obvious. I only seem to have one bus stop on that road there, so that is that resolved. So that small change will hopefully connect into this port nice and easily. The final thing we need to do is now just get some boats onto this route, and we're going to put quite a lot on. I think we're going to put four on in total, which is quite a lot. But I can see this being a very high demand route, so and it's quite some distance as well, actually. So I'm expecting quite a bit of movement 
which is good. Okay, so with that done, we are now connecting up into this region a bit better, which is good. We've got our trains on the go, which is fantastic. Starting to get a little bit of demand. Crazy how busy things are here, but I mean, I'm just going to leave it for the time being. There are boats which are docking to take away a lot of this right now. It's a bit tight, this bay, and I realise that, yes, the boats are running aground, but I could make the change, but I'm not going to, to be honest. I wasn't really expecting to be using this big boats and them also to have that big a turning circle. That boat there's not done too bad, and the good thing is this place is partially emptied out for now, which is good. It's crazy how busy things are in this town right now, though. Harbour Express, I mean, realistically, I want to build a tram to tidy things up here, but we spent so much time there that I don't really want to spend much more time on there. How is the boat doing coming over from... Is that the brown boat? Yeah, 93 passengers. That's just cleared up a lot of the demand there, which is fantastic. We've just got busyness everywhere, to be honest, which is a really good sign. 93 people waiting to get the train here. That's a good figure. And you're full 61, so let's make this upgrade. And this up here, we've got a lot of train lines all of a sudden, which is fantastic. I'm going to just upgrade the train. I'm not going to add in a second train. We're just going to upgrade this to 83, and that's going to cost us 2 million. So that should hopefully help to clear some of the backlog here. And I definitely feel a airport coming on up here. I think this would be a really good idea to have. The real question is, where do we place the airport, though? And how big does the airport need to be? I think... We're only going to build a small airport and we're probably only going to have one route connecting into Kirkwall, to be honest. I don't think we really need much more than that. Next question is, where is this airport going to go and can we get it beside the railway line so we can get an airport? Uh, an airport. We're building an airport, Calum. Uh, maybe a train station. That would be a bit better of an idea. So say, for example, we go for something like this here. I want to try and make this as cheap as possible because I know train stations and airport building terrain modification. It can all be very, very expensive. So let's go ahead and let's grab ourselves a train station. So if we go into the right menu, fortunately right now we're dealing with quite short trains. So I think we're going to take the... Yeah, I think we're honestly just going to build 160 metres, which is not a lot at all, but hey ho, it does the job. And if we really need to, we can upgrade that at a later stage. Realise we're going to slow down on approach, and then we're probably going to have a height issue here. Because we need to climb quite considerably. So let's go and pull this back a bit, connect that into there, which is perfect. Then the final thing we need to do is grab the modification here. Doesn't really matter. Kettletoft into Kettletoft Central, Braswick, Kettletoft Central. And there we go. So that's the airport built here, which is fantastic. I think I probably still need to connect this up via road, though. Or, I mean, I can't. I really can't connect this up via road, which is very strange. I mean, as long as it's connected up to there, we should be fine. I mean, no one's going to be driving to the airport as it is anyway. And as long as the game doesn't moan, we should be good. So I'm quite happy about that. So let's build our first ever air route. And it has taken way too long. And I really do apologise about this. It should have happened much sooner. But let's get something in the sky long last. This is our first route. It's just going to be F for flying. I mean, I could do P. I don't really know. As long as I'm consistent in whatever I do, it doesn't matter what I do. And let's do Kettle Toft. Which I think is a fantastic name, by the way. Quite unique toft i mean toft is not really a word it's not a word in the english language i don't think could be in gaelic to be fair and as an island area gaelic i can imagine is at least spoken up in orkney island i don't know how predominant it will be and gaelic for those who don't know is really like the scottish it's sort of like the scottish native language i mean we do have scots as well but uh, gaelic is sort of the celtic like, the Irish have their own version, which I guess you could call Gaelic, and then the, us Scots, we've got Gaelic, and it all derives from, like, the Celtic, I think. I, 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 my knowledge isn't on the best. It's really not the best on it, and it really should be a lot better, to be honest. I'm realising that these boats are going way too fast right now, so I'm actually going to sell one, because there's no need for two, because this is such a short crossing. 
Um, but that's good. Let's go ahead and get a plane on here. Let's actually see what planes we've got. This isn't good. This is, really isn't good. We've got way, and I mean way too large planes. I really ideally want the Yak plane, and I can just hear Eth Meister in my head right now suggesting the Yak mod. We've got the Yak mod. I've just not gone for it yet. 11 million. 11 million is a lot. Is it too much? You know what, I'm actually going to pause this game and I'm going to bring the Yak in because I do feel that is too much and we'd never meet that demand as it is. And just like that, with the power of editing, we are back. With quite a few different planes. So we brought the Yak 40 and the Yak is just a, it's a really good plane to start off routes with. Hence why I wanted to bring it in. But I thought, you know what, we've also got some other good smaller planes which we could try out because the Yak isn't always the best in some situations. So we've got the TU-154, which I believe is a Russian plane. Quite a large capacity. It sort of goes up against the Airbus A320. It's got similar stats. There is a bit of a price similarity and it's not something which I'm considering, but I thought I'd bring in. Uh, the DH-7 or the DHC-7, should I say. This is quite a good one and we might actually start off with that, it goes slightly slower than the Yak, actually. And then we've also got the D Havaland, which again is also not a bad plane. It goes a bit slow. I think we're just going to start off with the Yak. Let's honestly go for it and let's see how things go. So let's get that in there. I don't think that's going to be very frequent at all, to be honest. 14 minutes, so we'll see how things go. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how things happen in the sky. And I just got a lot of lag there, didn't I? Uh, interestingly, things are very, very busy here, which is good to see, and I'm never upset when I'm seeing a busy port. What I will do then is I'm going to buy an extra ship for each, which are both running hovercraft, mainly just because of the distance, to be honest. And then, how's Bracewick to Eddie doing right now? You're on hovercraft as well. I mean, most routes are on hovercraft, and it honestly makes sense, just because of the efficiency and we've got a lot of long distances to cover on a lot of our routes here so we might as well go for it uh there we go and then our other route actually i suppose we've got now as well oh do we never make that connection i thought we did i thought so we don't actually have a connection yet between grobster and over here that's probably why i've still got a free port over here don't i or do we connect? I feel we should connect up. This would be an obvious choice to connect up Whitehall and Grobster. But then that could also be a good flying route, to be honest. I think that could be a really successful route, actually. I mean, I am conscious of money because we're slowly actually running out of money, which is quite crazy. How's the bus doing actually in Eddie right now? It's doing really, really well. I'm really happy with how Eddie's grown. I mean, for a small, or not Eddie, but Egglesey, sorry. It's just done really well. It's up at a thousand. It's got lots of high-rise buildings, which is great to see. And it's grown to take up a good portion of the island, which I'm really happy about. There's just so much I'm proud of. So much I'm proud of around here. Anyway, how are we doing with all of the people? People-wise, we're doing not too bad. We're getting a lot of people moving around. Stations are starting to fill up, which is fantastic. How are the trains actually doing profitability-wise? So... All in all, losing quite a bit of money. Not surprised at that, to be honest. Uh, what we can do, though, is we can try and improve on that with some bus routes. And I think that's where we can go from here. I do think before we do that, though, we're going to add in another airport. And this airport's going to be down here. So I'm also going to stick with this small airport idea. Just because I don't want anything too overkill. I'm not really going to have too many connections, to be honest. I'm mainly just going to be flying into Kirkwall itself and nothing else. I do want to make that quite a, a hub airport, you could say. What we're going to do is we're going to build this on the Line S side, but we're going to have an extra bus stop in here. I think we also need to add in larger buses as well, because I think this route could just do with a bit of an uplift. So this route right now is... Our, it's one, it's, we've had this route for a long time. It's also slightly negative right now, but it is running very old buses. Let's change up and let's go for Volvos, which can go 12 miles per hour faster. They've also got a... They got a slightly larger capacity. 
yeah by two so it's not too bad an upgrade as it is anyway and we've got the money what we are going to do additionally is we're also going to add in the bus stop here as well so this will probably clog up traffic a tiny bit but there's not too much traffic going on the road anyway uh, let's have a think here so after bus stop number two we're going to stop here and then if that's bus stop number nine after bus stop number eight london roads before london roads and that's really weird having two bus stops named the same thing but just in total separate towns but you can imagine it is actually quite a common occurrence but let's go for that there and let's then connect up our next air route Again, I don't know how successful it's going to be, but I think it's really good to have. So let's connect you into there like so. This is going to be an F. This is going to be, uh, let's go for Kirkwall to Lioness. It's closer to Lioness than Long Hope, I would say. Geographically, or by the crow flies, actually it's probably closer to Long Hope, to be honest. But hey-ho, that will do for now. And then if we can go ahead and let's just grab a yak to get us started with. Keeps the cost nice and low. And then if we send that out, that is perfect there. And then hopefully the buses will start to get a bit of use as well, which is exciting. How's things going on over here then? So we've got our route now over to the docks. We're not seeing, I mean, we are seeing a few people waiting on the buses there. I'm seeing a lot of people wanting to continue to go along in to Lioness though, which is quite interesting is the bus demand, it looks like the bus demand in both directions is pretty full. So what we can do is we can actually help that out. First things first is on the existing route, we can actually upgrade the buses because again, I feel these old Man SL buses, they're not the best to be honest and I feel they've had their time. Let's go for the Volvos. This is gonna cost me a good two, okay, 1.35 million, not as bad. And let's also add on an additional Volvo as well to that route. Just to help things out, help the demand clear out Rackwick. Which has actually grown itself into not a too bad town either overall. I mean, 380 people, considering it started with about 90 people. And it was a long road, or long journey over the mountain tops. Quite a perilous one. Similarly, because we've done that, I feel like we owe it to add in an extra bus over here. Maybe an extra two buses actually, just because we've got so much people to move out of Long Hope right now. This bus stop alone has, you know, 80 people waiting, which is quite extraordinary. It'll be interesting to see though, I really want to see some success in the air. I would, it would just be great to see. I also just look up here and I'm like, whoa, can we... I mean, this is crazy. So that train, we need to upgrade the trains again on this route, don't we? Both leaving film, we've got a lot of people waiting at each station. So let's actually upgrade this as well. We're starting to see a real mix, to be honest. I mean, we're going to focus on some of these routes shortly and try get them into the profits and see what we can do. But let's focus here on our Bernayan route. So, I mean, it's doing phenomenally well. 600k in profit, which is great. What we're going to do is we're going to go up to four car trains. I am very tempted and I would love to dip into some other trains. I just don't have the money to buy these trains. I need to sort of be even across all my lines. So for now anyway, it's mainly just going to be our wonderful class 101 trains, which are doing a fine job and they're great cost for value for money is really what they are, which is perfect. So hopefully that upgrade will make sense and it'll continue to do well into the future. I do find myself around here a lot right now, but let's actually turn our attention around and let's connect up some other ports. So what we're going to do is we've got our ports here in Finn's town. Let's connect this up to something and then we can get a bus route in this town and hopefully improve the rail connection. Boat wise, how are we looking? Quite mixed overall actually. Um, so our new route, which we've added in Kirkwall to Weir, it's actually... Losing quite a bit of money, as is Rackwick to Stromness. Kind of not surprised until we get more trains on there, to be honest. Balfour to Kirkwall, it's also not doing phenomenal. It's actually not got anyone on it, which is not good. Probably need to do something in Balfour itself to actually get people moving around there. Uh, but I guess all this will take a bit of time to take effect. Anyway, so leaving Finstown, what we're going to do is we're maybe actually also going to connect this up to South Weir because I think that's quite a logical thing to do. So if we connect into here, 
and yeah, they can cross over each other. That's not too big an issue. Not that bothered about that. Let's go and name this route. So this is a BO. This is Finn's Town up to the town of Weir. And there we have it. Final thing to do is actually assign some boats onto this route, which we should be able to do from over here. And for this route, we're going to go for only two hovercraft because we are out of money, which is really, really sad. Kind of gutted at that, to be honest, but I mean, I kind of am expecting that. Let's actually just have a look at the financial sheet and see where we're at, because obviously right now we're spending a ridiculous amount of money. For example, in 2014, we spent 25 million on new vehicles, remembering that we have a quite large loan out right now. It's outstanding, and that is currently sitting at 50 million. And I'd like to clear some of that, to be honest, and I would have if this series was continuing on more episodes, but just the way it's finished, it hasn't. But hey-ho, interesting, interesting, interesting. Anyway, this actually all can't fit on the one screen as well, because I've actually spent so much. But the big thing is we need to look at two values, where my mouse is right now. So, running cost right now, for 2015 it was 26.2 mil, income was only 34.5 mil. So, at my peak I was basically gaining about, I think 11, what I say about 11 mil a year. Whereas right now that gap has actually got smaller and we're only gaining about 8 mil a year, which is not good. So it means that we've probably got a lot of unprofitable routes, as we know, mainly new trains, which definitely need some work. And we can continue to do that right now. So let's, let's start off by adding in some buses, as I said, into some of these towns, which really need them, to be honest. Need a bit better connection with the railway station so we had a bus stop up there then we just basically make our way through the town if we come down to here stop in here and then let's have a turning stop over there then that should do the trick so very very basic route around the town of finstown nothing too exciting but it'll do the job for myself and hopefully it should connect this town, get people moving between the dock and hopefully make the train a bit busier. That's really the aim here. So this is BU and this is the town of Finstown. Not going to put two glamorous buses on here. We might actually go for the Man SLs even though I have just dissed them. But to start off with, they're really actually not that a bad bus. On a lot of pre-existing routes, once you've got demand, they aren't really ideal at all and that's why I have removed them. But I think we'll do here for now, to be honest. So let's just get three in the town of Finstown, and let's create some demand. Train station is quite busy, which is good to see. How are we doing on some of these routes, which are really busy? So right now, Kirkwall to Stromness, a lot of people waiting. I can see why. I think we need to put another train on there ASAP to help the demand, which I can imagine is probably yeah, 13 people here in Kirkwall waiting for that train service. So let's go and help that route out. It's probably one of our longest ones actually, that and the dark blue line which also goes from here. The dark blue line goes to Finstown, Dunby and then up to Bursey up in the top corner, whereas this route goes the light green route should I say from Finstown to Stromness to the harbour, so both long routes generally. And interestingly Bursey has got quite a lot of people waiting which is quite nice to see, 22 passengers all in all. And I think that if we could get a bit of money and add in an extra train there, that would also be ideal. Do we need to connect up Dunby? I don't really think we do too much, to be honest, just because Dunby, the town itself, is not actually very... I feel that this train station is busy because it is a transfer station. It's not one of these stations which is busy because of the size of the town. Size of the town is very, very small right now, so I'm not expecting that to do too great, to be honest. We could definitely do a bus around Stromness. Stromness is a relatively big town. It was the second biggest town at the start of the game. It is, I think, the second biggest town in Kirk... in, in Kirkwall. Kirkwall being the biggest town, but I think it's generally the second biggest town in Orkney overall. So I'm not really too surprised, to be honest, that it is doing quite well. It's nice to see this station as well doing quite well. I'm um, not too surprised at that one either, to be honest. What we're going to do is we're going to very quickly build a bus route now. I've got a bit of money 
over here, which is good. Again, I'm not going to go for anything too overkill, but just a basic bus route which connects up the town nicely. So if we go around that part of the town, I'm just sort of building it at random, to be honest, and then we go up here. I'm actually going to have very, and I mean very few bus stops here. But it'll do the job, and that's what matters. So the next thing I want to do, and I should have done this a long time ago, is that I want to extend the train down from Bure, St. Margaret's Hope, all the way down to Cleet. This, and I've had this train station here since probably episode 10 or so, it's been well overdue, and I think it's about time we go and do this now. The one thing that I am considering though is we might want to double up the line. I think I want to have multiple trains on here, though I think it might cost quite a bit of money to do so. So I'm going to sort of be a cheap skate, and I'm actually going to build a separate train to do this route. It will actually earn me more money as well, and it seems to me just a lot of hassle to be honest. I'm, I am chickening out. It would make sense to have it all as one, but... There's going to be different demands between the two towns right now, so I think this is probably the best thing to go for. I think right now the demand between St. Margaret's Hope and Barry is very high, which I'm happy about. But, it's going to be different going down to Cleet. So let's go ahead and deal with that. Um, let's just call this by its short name, actually. Let's call it by Hope, because that is what it is. It's St. Margaret's Hope. And... Yeah, the bus, as we can tell, I mean, it's phenomenally busy, so we're going to ax that very shortly. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with... We're going to try and be ambitious, and we're going to go for... No, we're not. I don't have enough money. This is my problem right now. I've actually run out of money, which is not good. Quite sad, to be honest, that I've run out of money. We have done just ridiculous amount of expansion, though. And to be fair, I don't need to wait until I get more money here, because what we can do... We could axe the bus beforehand. I kind of actually don't want to do that. Good thing is, we're going to be getting our money straight back here, though, which is good. So that's the train bought. Let's go and get the train on the go ASAP there. And then we'll wait for the train to do, maybe do a single run. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll replace that. Now, the thing about Cleet is Cleet is a very big town. It gets good. It's at a decent population. So it is still going to need a bus. That is for sure. And we need to make sure that we've got bus stops in and around the town which actually allow for that. What I am going to have to do though is I'm just going to have to wait until I get a lot of money because right now I am just broke. So now that we have a bit of money let's go and break the route. Let's go and sell all the vehicles and that should get me a good bit of money back and then let's also scrap the route. Final thing we need to do now is actually make sure this town is connected up as I previously said. This is going to be quite difficult to do just because I'm going to have to have a bus route which is going to have to wind around the town in a certain way that it doesn't really look back on itself. It's oh, it's going to be messy. Uh, if we go to four, I'm going to have to tidy this up quite a bit, aren't I? I'm just realising what I'm doing here. Church Street, so... Oh, this is awful. So ladies and gentlemen, I've gone ahead and sold the buses and we've gone ahead and created this new city route, so... Because Cleet is sort of like an 8, the number 8, if you think about it and you look at it from an aerial view, it is sort of like that. Where the Cleet word is, it's actually the middle of the town and I don't want to have a bus route which has got one end, the train station, which is going to be absolutely really busy and then it be empty at the other end. So that's why I've gone for a this interesting church lane stop here, which might be good, might be bad, I'm not at all sure, but it's worth adding in anyway to try and, uh, I guess, have some balance throughout the town. Might work, it might not, but I do think it will, uh, it shall do us some good at least. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab ourselves some buses now that we've got 6 million in the bank, which is good. I've not let the game run for that long, actually, so it gives me the opinion we're back to making good, consistent money. I say that hesitantly, but, uh, I mean, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful, and saying that every month we're losing about 2 million now, so every time we tick over I do get the feed a little bit, but overall we are doing really well on some routes. Trains generally, we're mainly in the green, which is great to see, and I think we can maybe add some extra trains in there shortly. Skies are not doing very well, which is a bit unfortunate. It looks like we do have some poor souls waiting here. There's not really anyone waiting on a flight, though, which is kind of disappointing. 
I was maybe hoping to start to see people getting ready to jet off. Got three people going up to Kettletoff though, which is good. How many people have we got waiting up here? That's the real question. So we have got one person and then one poor soul waiting at the train station as well. It's a bit disappointing. All in all, I really want to see what would happen if we actually do add in an airport for Bernayn and Surin. I mean, I feel that it's such a short distance to Kirkwall, but there probably is the demand. Let's have a look at something interesting. Let's actually have a look at the town's drop down here and really see how things are. So, Surin's actually our biggest town now, then Bernayn, then Weir. Weir's connected up fine via the boats. But I think if we actually add in a... I think we're going to do it. We're going to do it and just see because I, th I feel we need to. I feel we really honestly need to. Because these times are so big that surely we can make a successful and possibly really high demand air route. So let's go for it. Let's bite the bullet and let's go for it. I'm going to go for a small airport again just because I don't want to spend too much money. And if we go for something like this here... Then we're also going to get a train station in as well. So we can get that in for 2.5 million. That's really high up, I have just realised though, but hey ho. Then what we're going to do is we're going to build a road. Oh my word, I'm just freaking out at all the money I'm spending here. So if we build a road going along there, that's okay. Then if we keep the game on times three, because I'm going to need the money very quickly. And I realise, yes, I could take a loan if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I want to end on the... I mean, we did set ourselves, looking back, some really difficult requirements throughout the series, to be honest. And I really want to keep to them. And I feel we have mainly, which is good. We're going to have to cut back even further here, actually. Um, especially the bridges one. I think the bridges one... And for those who didn't watch episode 1 of this series, we set ourselves quite a few rules. But there was two big ones, I guess you could say. And those were that you weren't allowed to place bridges where bridges don't exist in real life. And then the other was I cannot have or really exceed the loan limit. Now, I have exceeded the loan limit. Quite a bit, in fact. But I sort of got to 30 and the loans were just biting me away. Again, we can't see it right now because I can't actually get this high enough up the screen because we're spending so much, but the thing was the r interest rates were just, I wasn't really making much money, so I decided to do the port barrel approach, which I think was fair in the end, to be honest. I really need to do some terraforming here, even though it's me spending unnecessary money. This just looks awful. There we go. That looks a tiny bit better. Uh, really, things were just I was just not making any progress. So we went to Port Barrels and I decided that I'd allow myself up to 50 million. Which we have done now and that's working out not too bad. So, quite happy we made that change. How's this little train doing? 29 passengers, so not phenomenal to be honest. But now with this extra stop, things might be a little bit different. So after one, we're going to stop in here. Then after Surin, we're going to stop in here as well. So that's this airport now built. So let's see what we can do here. Again, I am I'm quite tempted to already actually pull the plane off the Lioness Long Hope route. The reason why I think this is probably not doing too great is because passengers probably actually can't get on the right bus, to be honest, because the bus is so heavy in demand. It means that passengers are really probably struggling to get here. It's not an airport you can just walk to, you know? And, I mean, we've got... Yeah, it's interesting. We've got five people here, but no one's really using the airport, you know? It's maybe because... I, I mean, there's no easy way to get to Kirkwall. To get to Kirkwall, you need to get the boat from Lioness over to Bury. You then need to get the bus from Bury up to St Mary's, and then you need to get the train. Which is quite a lot, if you ask me. It's nice to see that this station is doing really well. Um, but yeah, again, things... I mean, over here, things are really not that busy either. The Kettletoff plane has just landed, it's got one passenger on it, and we've got nobody waiting, which is disappointing. And up here, yep, we've got nobody waiting, which is not good, so... I do want to see how this is doing, though. So what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to redirect one of the planes, and we're going to make that one the... Yeah, let's go for Line S, because Line S isn't going to be profitable, is it? So that's going to go to Long Hope one last time. 
and then it's now going to move up here to Surin, which I'm hoping, I mean, it can't be worse, can it? So it can only be better, which is good. So let's go and allow for that. And let's jump away and we'll come back to that shortly. So looking back at the trains here, we have made some modifications, which is good. The yellow route in particular looks very busy right now. This is going to... Okay, yeah, it's going around to Gritley. Gritley's very busy right now, which is good to see. 39 people waiting there right now. I think the route probably merits a second train. It's only got one right now. It's only making 22k, but I think in the future it's going to be a real winner for me. So that's why we're going to add in a extra train for another 2 million. Now... Outside of this, what other routes are doing well here? So it's mainly that yellow one, and overall, everything else is really quite balanced. What train routes are in the negative? Kirkwall commuter line is interestingly the one in the negative. We could possibly think about downgrading. Uh, nah, we don't have the... I kind of wish we still had the rail bus or something, and there's no way we're going to get any cheaper locomotives on there, so I just feel... One of the trains could be used better elsewhere, you know? Trains aren't doing fantastic. They've got people on them, but not enough people on them. This is interesting, though. One person waiting to go to Kesseltoft. I was hoping it was going to be Surin. Unfortunately not. Interestingly, how busy... I want to know if the train will get busier. Now it's got an extra stop. It might do. That's at 33... Yeah, I'm, I'm really torn. I am really torn, to be honest. But what we're going to do now, I think, is we're going to build a tram. Because I feel we need to end the series and make sure we've built something of everything. And we've not built a tram yet, so let's go ahead and build a tram. Tram's going to be in Brunei, and I think for an obvious reason, to be honest. I think it's needed, uh, first of all, to just connect up the two train stations. So let's give this a go. Where is the tram going to run? Well, it's going to run along a particular road which is already doing very, very well. And you can probably guess it's going to be a mixture of the Harbour Express route, which is going to take up the bulk of it. Though I am going to have to do quite a bit of road working. And then also this connects up with the Harbour and the train station, which is fantastic. This is where we're going to have some issues on. This is where it could be quite expensive. Like that costs 5 million alone. I don't even know how it costs 5 million for all this, but I mean, that factory there alone costs 3 million. It does hire a lot of people, 117 people, and considering the town of Brunei has 1,300 people, that's hiring a lot and a large part of the town's population, to be honest. So, can maybe see why. Uh, let's change this then, and let's downgrade to upgrade. It's not going to allow me to, unfortunately, but it's not the end of the world. At least we've got it in there. This is the part which is probably going to be the most expensive part for me. How can we do this? We can't go there. We can't really go here. I'm just going to actually demolish, which is going to cost me quite a lot of money. I realize that, but hey ho, sometimes you just need to bite the bullet. If we run into there, and then we run into there like so, that's perfect. And then we can actually re-add the stop back in. This stop is going to be replaced shortly anyway with our tram. The Harbour Express will depart after this. Then if we continue our... our, our it's kind of our destruction, isn't it, along here. And let's see what we can do. So we can come up to here. And then if we can maybe just try and loop around... Which we're looking like we can do successfully. And there we go. So that's our tram route. It's quite basic in general. And it's going to be covering a lot of the stops. It's pretty much going to be following the old route exactly, actually. Which is cool. Let's clear up that old stop there. Get rid of that road there. Allow for some extra building. Then coming along here. It is literally stopping at the current stops uh, right now of the Harbour Express. What I'm going to do currently on this old bus route in Brunei is we're going to push it further up in the town and see if we can make a difference there. Now the interesting thing I want to see is, let's put this game onto a bit more speed. I suppose we do already have a tram line coming to think about it. We have a tram route down in Buddy St Mary's and that is doing phenomenally good. 
The Harbour Express already thinks it's a tram line because all the stops are now covered by tram tracks, which is fantastic. So now we just need to get trams onto the route, which that's going to be interesting in itself because I don't really know where I'm going to actually get a tram depot in for a cheap amount of money because all the buildings along this route are generally quite pricey. We might be able to squeeze something in here. 89k, I can bite that bullet. That's good. Now, what do we want? I want these but I want these trams here. So let's go and grab them. Let's grab like six of them and let's get that out onto the Harbour Express. And then the remaining five buses we can go ahead and sell up. Which should make us quite a bit of money. A nice slice. Which will helpfully mean I don't drop back into the negative. So that's that going there. Uh, we've got some weird routing issue going on over at this stop here, which I'm not happy about at all. Seems to be calling here three times, which I'm not happy about. If we get rid of this bus here. There we go. Right, so let's have a think about what's going on here. Because something's definitely not right. So we've got... Park Lane we're starting at. We don't need to call for the third. Don't need to call the first time, do we? Right, so after six, we're going to call in here. And there we go. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Honestly, that will do, which is good. Right, so next question is, where does the bus call? Okay, not good. Let's flip you. Let's flip you over to one. And then let's flip you over to one as well so that means you're not conflicting with the green bus and the green bus is going to be a lot of competition for this tram route which i'm very much aware of i'm expecting this tram route to do very well though that's why i want to push this green bus up a bit and we're going to do that quite successfully because we're going to go on a road which is already doing quite well a lot of it's already doubled up so let's go and can probably double up a bit more of it actually let's go and add in a bus stop there let's add in a bus stop up there then let's have another one coming down here back into town and then yeah just call there i think that should do the trick so we're not really going to change too much uh currently the route's actually quite negative which is disappointing so hopefully we can make a change here so what we're going to do is we're going to remove five and six and then we're also going to now remove six and six again and then what we're going to do is after so we've got one two three after bus stop number four church street we're going to jump up here up to st john's road to the avenue and then in at school lane spin around at alexander road and then we're going to continue back up school lane up the avenue up st john's roads then back down to church street so that is now going to mean that these two routes are much more separated and it's something I've been wanting to do for a while because they've very much been stealing each other's market share for a good amount of time now. So I think making this change is a really good idea and means that Brunei again is going to be even better served. It's got a suburban and it's got a dock runner route which is just perfect and I feel that that should near enough maximise my cash for this area. It's probably going to take a bit of time for stuff to happen but we can already see the Cobras are definitely already struggling to be honest so let's go ahead and buy another one cobras don't cost too much which is good actually so let's get another tram out there looks like we're managing to clear the number of people over at the train station at the west of the town and the new trains are nice and full which is great to see still how's things going on over here because four people that's good that's really really good Happy to see that number. Not seeing anyone at this end. But we are actually bringing in three people here, which is good as well. I mean, planes are just so difficult in this game. And it'd be really, really good to see a bit of an improvement in the next Transport Fever. But I don't know if that'll happen, to be honest. It'd be great to see. Um, but, I mean, I realise I don't always do planes justice. You know, I've been trying out routes which probably aren't going to succeed this route really should succeed. It's got a good connection now. We're connecting up Brunei nicely and Surin up to the mainland. So now I realise you can get a boat over to Weir, then get a bus through Weir, then get another boat from Weir to Kirkwall and then get the train into Kirkwall itself. But 
surely flying is a good option now, you know, a good possibility. Uh, and I'm glad we've given it a punt. How's things going on here? Uh, interestingly, we've got quite a lot of demands to go out to Orfer, which is good. Does it justify an extra train? I don't think so right now, to be honest. I think we're going to leave it as is. One train route I do want to check on, though, is the Doombi to Eevee, the one that doesn't go via Kirkwall. How is it doing? So, down here, it seems to be doing very well. It's got 29 people waiting, but the train is just coming in, to be fair, so that backlog is going to clear. How's things up at Doombi? Yeah, a lot of people want to go to Eevee. I'm not surprised at that, because Eevee's quite a busy place. A lot of people want to leave Eevee as well, which is interesting, so... What we're going to do, I think, is we're going to add in a extra train onto this route and then hopefully start to see a bit more of that demand clear as well. So on that train goes and then that should clear some of that up. Bursi as well. Bursi is doing really well considering how remote it is. It's got 34 people waiting. This is the lifeline of the town and the good thing is about the train station is that it does cover most of the town. There'd be no real benefit of me adding in a bus route into this town at this stage, to be honest. Okay, so that really brings us to a good close. And I'm really, really not wanting to say that, but all good things must come to an end, unfortunately, and I feel the end is now. We can let this game continue to run, and I will as I do my outro speech here, because... We're going to do some flyovers in a second, but I'm going to let that play out over music because I just want to show the progress that we've really done in this series and what we've achieved. It's been fantastic. First of all, I want to say a massive thanks to you, the viewer. You, the viewer, you have just changed the interaction of this series. Before, in previous series, I very much just started recording and that was it, you know? And don't get me wrong, it provided some good content, but it didn't provide you know, a story, and that's really what I tried to focus on this series. But I was very much going to struggle without you, the viewer, and to be able to incorporate so many users' feedback, I've tried to include it in as many videos as possible, actually putting a comment into the video, actually talking about a lot of ideas generally. It's been fantastic to do, and I'm really glad that I managed to achieve that real good level of interaction, and hopefully that can continue on into the near future. The Transport Fever 2. We'll discuss that when we actually get our hands on that game, which there should be a video out probably in the next day or two. It really depends on work, unfortunately, right now. This is the worst time. I even asked for a holiday on the day that Transport Fever 2 comes out, and they said no. Um, but fortunately, as we're coming up to Christmas, I'll have quite a bit of free time to play the game anyway, which is good. But when we do get to that stage, I want to continue on with that, and it's just been great. All the support, all the likes, all the comments, you know, I just want it to continue and try and build a really good community around this, because it has been great to be a part of up until now. The next thing I want to say is thank you to, I guess, the game developers, Urban Games, and really what they've achieved with this. You know, coming from Train Fever, I didn't play Train Fever, but Train Fever was... A uh, real good starting point and it had a lot of good ideas, but you could see it was struggling in some elements, but now it's it's very much gone, they went away, they developed this game, and this game started off rocky to be honest, it was a great game, but you couldn't play for very long at all, then they brought out a few performance patches, and that really then did start to make the difference, which was great, and then as that happened, you know, everything really just sort of clicked into place. And this game became phenomenal, and it is phenomenal. Still has its downs, you know, but overall, you can still get lost in this game for hours on hours on end, and that's what makes a great game, and they've definitely achieved that with this. Interestingly, we've got some Souder 2 shares currently running around Whitehall, which is uh, a bit outdated. I mean, that's upgrade to some nice and modern Man SLs, eh? That'll do the job. Um, but yeah, it has just been a great achievement from those guys uh, over in Schaffhausen in Switzerland. So thank you very much to them. And I can't wait to see what Transport Fever 2 brings. And then that brings us to Orkney, really. Uh, the Orkney series, it was really brought up because of what to do in Archipelago. And I thought, where's the better place to do it than to do it in and around Scotland? And Orkney was just a choice. I thought, you know what? My dad used to live there. 
He used to live there for about 18 months. He used to be a bank in person in Kirkwall um, and he said it was quite an interesting place to live. It's quite a lot of interesting history and hopefully I've been able to cover some of that. Probably not as much as I wanted to. Massive thank you to Nelly Boy. He has been in the comments consistently. He's from Orkney. He's been providing a lot of hints, tips and guidance really on how I can improve this series and he has done a great job there. And really with that said, let's just go ahead and summarise how we've done financially and over the stats. So the first thing is we need to notice that we have a loan outstanding of 50 million in port barrels. Would that be cleared? I'm not really sure. Let's break it down. First of all, for 2017, actually we'll wait for 2018 to take over because it is about to take over. I really want to see what the difference is between running costs and income because those are really the two two big figures that I do care about. We're constantly spending right now. This year, new vehicles, we basically spent 9.7 million, as you can see where my mouse is, so quite a lot, all in all. But as we tick into the new year, we can see running costs total 30.5 million, income though 42.1 million, so that means that gap is widening again. It's just short of 12 million, which is fantastic. And I do reckon if we were to continue running this game, the gap would get even bigger now with a lot of our success. Let's actually go through some of the individual routes now and really see how we've done. So, unfortunately, we never got round, and I had the money, but we just never got round to building our crude oil route from Buddy all the way down to our oil refinery over at Cleet. Just didn't happen, unfortunately, but I think the trucks have done a really good job, and all in all, we have made a lot of money out of that route, which we'll talk about shortly. Trains wise, it was really unfortunate that we only got to start touching Kirkwall and look at just the demand now, this is great to see. It's really unfortunate that we only got to touch the demand at this late stage on the mainland, but we have had some really, really successful trains. I've already somehow got three trains on the yellow route going out to Gritley. I think that's also partially probably because of St Mary's to be honest, St Mary's is a very busy place, but it's great to see that's doing so well. Grobster Whitehall, that's been an interesting island uh, throughout the series to be honest and it'd be nice to see a bit more from that to be honest but I think we got really turn our attention over to where our trains have really done well. Uh, the yellow line not as much to be honest here, that's actually in the negative right now, minus 160k which is not good to see but our grey I guess you could say it is, our grey route this year, our Brunei and Surin East that's got two trains of 83 capacity, near enough full to the brim, making us just short of a million, which is fantastic. Buses and cargo. This is quite an interesting one. A lot of routes which are just really not doing that great. I mean, the route in Brunei is not doing fantastic. That's just been modified, though, so I think we can honestly cut that some slack. It's interestingly not even getting full buses now, which is quite surprising. But, I mean, I guess we're in a quieter part of town. I should probably fly over Brunei to give you the perspective. Looks like we're actually meeting the demands generally in the town, which is fantastic. That's something which we've not been able to achieve all series, but hey-ho. Then we've got a lot of negative routes, a lot of new ones which I've set up. Finstown, uh, Cleet and Stromness. These are ones which are really there just to support the train. Then, continuing on down this list, we start to move into some of our... I guess, cargo routes which are helping to serve towns. So we've got a very basic route, 18 seconds, which is crazily low. This is over just moving the fuel from the processing plant, which is based here, over to our truck stop, which is just here. So it's a very, very, very short distance, but it is something which it... It needed to be done. I was thinking about rotating this at one point, but I thought, no, that'll be cheating. So that's an interesting route. And then we have just got lots of success with cargo. Cargo has really done us really well, with some notable exceptions on passengers. Our bus route over at Rackwick has done phenomenal, connecting up Rackwick. And the this is the Rackwick and Lioness line, actually, which is doing very well. Two relatively large towns now, and I've already added quite a lot of buses into Ratwick in this episode. We could continue to add more by the looks of it, and let's go ahead and do so, because we might as well try and support it as well as possible. 
And then we have really just got to, I think, the oil roundabout Bury and St Mary's. This has really pulled us through a lot, as I just mentioned. It has brought this area to life. Bury, St Mary's, St Margaret's Hope, Cleet. These are very large towns on the scale of the map and is something which I'll look at shortly, but actually we'll have a very quick skim now. We'll come back to it. St Margaret's Hope there, then Bury, and then St Mary's. You know, they're up there in the top eight, which is fantastic. And considering they're a bit cut off from actually what was going on mainly, they've done very, very well. Trams. Trams are doing fantastic in all seriousness. Uh, I could add a lot more as well on, to be honest, which is great to see. The trams that we've added in, I would like to add in a lot more and update a lot of the bus routes. Currently right now, we have got a few Cobras basically going in between Buddy and St. Mary's. We did think about building in a railway line in between these two, but I thought, you know what, I'm not going to allow for it. Give myself that extra challenge, and you know what, that challenge has paid off. And then recently we've gone ahead and installed our new route, Brunei Harbour Express route, which that's doing fantastic. How many people are waiting at that station? 161. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Uh, 70 people waiting in Surin, so it's a bit lopsided, I guess you could say, right now. But that's honestly probably because of how successful the tram is moving people right now. It's all a great thumbs up from me. Planes. Now, we only touched on this this episode, but I do feel I was going to struggle with them anyway. Neither of them are really taking off in this episode. They've had quite a few years to actually, you know, take flight, but nothing's really happened. And you'd expect on an archipelago for them to do okay, but they've really just not done okay, to be honest. Got a plane leaving here with two people on it right now, and then the other one's got zero people on it right now. So I've not mastered that, but it is something which I wasn't expecting to do too well in any way. Then finally, the boats. This is an archipelago. This is an island area, and... My god, it has performed. So, interestingly, I wouldn't expect this one, but Eddie to Egglesea is the most profitable. And it could probably do with an extra boat or two on there as well, actually. Rapness, Surin, Rapness, Surin, again, quite an odd one. Now, we have had this harbour in Surin for a long time, but it wasn't actually getting used because it was really competing with the Brunei to Egglesea. We used to have a Surin Egglesea route, but they're reaching into each other, but this wrap nest route is doing really, really well. Then we've got a lot of other successful routes, which I'm really, really happy about indeed. And then we have got some interesting cargo routes, actually, which are in the negative. Not by much, to be fair, but I'm willing to lose a bit of money on these routes because they do help these towns grow, and that means then we've got better passenger movement, stuff like that. So, and I would like to spend a lot more time on the cargo. We've just really not had time in this series. So a few more things I want to look over. So overall, uh, the maintenance of vehicles is awful, as you can see. It's something I've just not focused on at all, to be honest, but I'm not too fussed about that, generally. Then we've got all the stations, not too bothered about that. Collectively, our route. So what is the most profitable route? Well, first of all, the most unprofitable route, currently on air routes. The air routes are in the top two, so almost a bit difficult. Then the commuter line around Kirkwall, I do expect that to continue to do a lot better. I said at the start of this episode I'd expect Kirkwall to grow out to the boundaries of the railway tracks. It's getting close, you know, we're starting to see houses build up along here, some roads pop up, which is fantastic, and I think in a few more years that would actually be realistic. Then, on the flip side, I mean, we've just got a lot of unsuccessful routes, which just help towns out a little bit, and I'm willing to make a loss. Then on the flip side, though, we're doing a lot better financially. No route currently above a million, which is quite surprising though, but we've got a lot of successful and consistent routes right now, which I'm very happy about indeed, and I think they'll continue to do well into the future and continue to grow. Kirkwall to Stromness, I mean, what a phenomenal train. I'm not overly surprised at that though, those being the two biggest towns, and Stromness as a town is also doing very, very good. Could actually add an extra train on there while we are doing this ending commentary which i'm quite happy to do continue to grow and because we've actually got a bit of money now as well we might as well go for it so that train's going to run on to there and help out with the frequency i think we added maybe just uh oh no we didn't oh that train's just gone in front of that train as well which is not good but hey ho anyway 
Towns. Now, Towns is an interesting one. So, finally, we actually end up, and it has been a very, very tight race, but Weir, or Wire, I'm going to say it for the final time in the correct way, Wire has ended up being the biggest town, which is uh, surprising, to be honest. I thought it would be Brunein, to be honest. I've spent the most time in Brunein, but I guess it's not really, it can't really grow too much more. It wants to grow down more by the coast, but it can't, and it's not really grown up the top mainly because there's not that great transport connections, to be honest. So, I'm not surprised it's not growing, uh, coming to think about it. Surin as well. Surin has had top spot for a while. Surin's well connected, and I'm not surprised with it being in its... so close to Brunei, you know. Um, then it is Brunei itself, and then Egelsey. So, all these four towns, the first four towns we started on are the four towns which we have landed up having the most success in, which we spent the most time here as well, we spent the most money here as well, so I'm honestly not surprised at that. This region has done me very, very well. Then, we jump over to Bunny St. Margaret's Hope. I'm not surprised at these ones, to be honest. We spent a lot of time down here as well in South Ronaldsey, and then it's really just runs down from there. Evie's done quite well, actually. Um, Evie is one of the towns which we connected up to. I think it was the first real town on the mainland we connected up to, which was really, really good. Uh, disappointingly, actually, we spent quite a lot of time at the start of the series on these towns, Whitehall and Grobster. Grobster is really low down, actually, but the thing is, I've not touched these towns since I've left them in about episode maybe nine or so. We've got the train running then, and since then we've not touched this place at all, so feel a bit neglected to be honest uh we could have done a lot more with this but hey ho we have made a good dent assets and then finally industry uh industry we uh, we just didn't get to do a lot we've only touched it looks like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten different production units all in all so not that fantastic it's mainly all around the I think it is just about all around the fuel and oil, though we do have some food production going on around Tanker Nest. I'm glad we got some of this going. We've got quite a lot of output coming out here from Tanker Nest, mainly providing St. Mary's with some food, but there is also some going up to Tanker Nest itself, which has definitely helped the growth. And we've also got some fuel, I think, going into Gritly. Yeah, we do, which is fantastic as well. So, all in all, I would have liked to spend a lot more time on cargo, but we've just not really been able to. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do for one final time is I'm going to show you the maps, the layout of the map, really all the lines. We're going to continue to do this into future series. I think it's really good to help tell the story about really what's going on on the map and show you how we're connecting things up. Quite a change, obviously, since the last episode. Quite a change just because of the train, especially on the mainland, which has been fantastic. And here we go with the final time lapses. So as the time lapses play out, we can just see the progress we've made, the sizes of towns, the way we've connected them up. It's fantastic. It really is fantastic, the progress we've made. Please tell me down below what your favourite part of the series has been, if that's been this last episode, if that's been the storytelling, if that's been the maps, if that's been when we added in that first train. Let me know, please, because I want to try and focus on the good going into Transport Fever 2 as well. The final thing to say, ladies and gentlemen, is please leave a like rating. I mean, I know it's one of these things which I always get on about, but the only way we're going to grow as a group, as a, as a family, you could say, you know, as a transport fever, just community, uh, we need support on this videos and like ratings, you know, it really helps boost things. It really does throughout the Google and YouTube search results. And if you can do that, that would be fantastic. And that's all, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like rating and subscribe if you are new around here. Go down into that description below where there is my Twitter, my Discord, and my Patreon. Any support on any of those you could show me would be greatly appreciated. And that is all, ladies and gentlemen, for Transport Fever on the Orkney Islands. My name is Bigfoot, and I'm out.